How, how do you get there? <laughs> the, this Saturday, the primary, how do you get there beyond the state when you haven't won a state yet? How do you win your first state? I mean, it's amazing to say I haven't won a state yet. <clears throat> You've only had three states that have voted. The Fox News decision desk can now project that former President Donald Trump will win the Iowa caucuses. Tonight, all eyes on New Hampshire. The last polls just closing in the first in the nation primary, and the race has already been called on the Republican side. The Associated Press has just called this race for former President Donald Trump. Even with former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley here on the ballot, Republicans in our state, 61% of them chose no one on the list. Well, it's not amazing. We need South to go Carolina's ahead and let these winner take states. all. I mean, it, it's, it's... Yeah, but it's, we need to let He's going to pick up more delegates. South Carolinians have not voted yet. A new CBS News poll shows Trump pulling 35 points ahead in the Palmetto State. Not only is there no evidence of any wrongdoing by President Biden, but it now appears as if the House Republican majority is being used by Russia to interfere in the 2024 election on behalf of Donald Trump. If they continue with this investigation, they are simply doing the work of Vladimir Putin to help Donald Trump win an election in November. That's where we are. In fact, it is no evidence. It is just simply evidence that the Republicans are willing to be used as assets of Russian intelligence, just like Donald Trump was in 2016. It is now a pervasive disease that has gone through the entire Republican Party, and it needs to be excised immediately. Wittingly or unwittingly, House Republicans have been acting as an agent or an asset of Russian intelligence for Vladimir Putin. Every election, it seems, the Republicans fall in favor with the Russians. This is all part of a propaganda and disinformation campaign by Russia attempting to help Donald Trump. And, you know, when we point out the very clear contours of this story, our colleagues just start chanting Russia hoax, Russia hoax. Well, what's the hoax? Is it the, uh, the brutal invasion of Ukraine and the tens of thousands of Ukrainians who've died or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of Russians who've died? Is it the death of Navalny that's the hoax? What exactly is the hoax they're talking about? Because um, it seems to me that the most well, likely hoax is really Donald Trump, who's been manipulated uh, by Putin for a long time or is certainly in love with Vladimir Putin. Let me ask you something. What do you think Putin has on him, on Trump? <laughs> Well, <laughs> oh, that's a good question. I, what has he got? I actually think that money. Donald Trump views himself as a Putin s leader, dictatorial figure. Yeah, yes. he said it. Yes, and we should believe him that he wants to go down this road. And that's the problem that we're encountering with some of my Republican colleagues. That um, there's a growing pro-Putin faction. Yeah. yeah in the Republican Party. And it's led by Donald Trump, some other outside figures like Tucker Carlson, and on the inside, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Jim Jordan. I have said before that has really offended so many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle is that we not only are supposed to swear to fight those enemies that are domestic, but also foreign, but it is weird when it seems like a lot of the domestic enemies are right here serving in the house with us. And that's what we have, because everyone should be ashamed. Everyone should be appalled that they have been peddling Russian propaganda. November of last year, I had the opportunity to name a new lectern. So when you all see me standing behind the lectern, it yeah. is this amazing lectern that uh, the Army, the Navy, and many people put together. Yeah. So this new lectern, came in in November, as I just stated. It is now the Alice Dunnigan and Ethel Payne lectern, which were the two first black women journalists that were part of the White House press corps. The oh. last time we had a lectern. <laughs> yeah. You know, this idea of, oh, it's a two-tier system, and it's so terrible. I'm like, wait a minute, it's been a two-tier system in this country. Like, we have the data to show it. The difference is the two-tier, we've always been the bottom tier. Right. And so now that black people have gotten into position and they know how far, you know, some of these DAs have gone after, you know, the little guy, the least that they can do is go after the big guy. 
So the only blemish on the great country of America worldwide is, in fact, Donald Trump. And can I make a suggestion? I move that every newspaper in America quits doing any fact checks on Joe Biden until they fact check Donald Trump every morning on the front page. It is ridiculous that the New York Times fact checked Joe Biden on something. I mean, he vomits lies. Trump vomits lies. And he, every day, yeah, over and over and over again. And it's just ridiculous that the New York Times is doing a fact check on, on Biden while they let Trump, while they're numb to the torrent of lies coming out of Trump's mouth. And, and, and that's the thing. I, mean, that, I have uh, no problem with this, fact this, check this, on this White House. Well, this is what fa- but they need to do the same thing. But again, this is what fascists do. Fascists lie so much. Fire hose of falsehoods. And they always hoods. say it. They talk, you know, you, you, Russia's fire hose of falsehoods, just like fascists. They lie so much that soon people get exhausted. Mm -hmm. And that's where the exhaustion comes in. And by the way, I would love every mainstream media outlet to look and ask the question, why does Trump trash America? What would you have Joe Biden do to make the case that he's not an elderly, well-meaning gentleman, that he's somebody who's really driving the car? Well, I think his record demonstrates that. And and I think people are going to see it in the campaign. Look, campaigns are about reporting back to the people about what you've been doing and what you want to do. It's kind of a, a report and also a forward-looking what, what you're going to do to lower costs or continue to do, as, as the president and I and others have done. What you're going to do to make sure there's security at the border. That's why we supported this bipartisan deal. But look, I don't think there's going to be a moment where there's going to be a videotape that, that proves something. The Biden family's German Shepherd commander has been involved in at least 24 biting incidents involving the U.S. Secret Service, according to newly obtained documents obtained by CNN. Welcome back. A Secret Service report was just released about a a Biden family member (laughs) who's caused a lot of controversy at the White House. Their dog. His name is Commander. The report found that there were at least... This is a lot. This is a lot. 24 (laughs) incidents of him biting folks. Well, it makes you wonder, what did he see that nobody else saw? Yeah, right? Look, 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 look. look. Okay, look. Look at him. Uh Uh-huh. He is standing there. You must have missed the 24 bite part of this story when you all... (laughs) He's saying something. He looks... he's cute. He's like, I know you got something in your pocket. Yeah, we see I don't know what it is. You can say it's your hand, but ah, let me check. Yeah. And he checked, and it was a guy's hand. I have a question for the Republicans. How can we we blame this on Hunter Biden? (laughs) There's got to be a way. (laughs) We have agency. We can shape the future. Future is not just something to experience, it's something to manifest. It's our decisions, not conditions, that will determine the fate and future of this planet as it relates to the issue of climate. And I couldn't be more proud in the tradition that is this office going back decades and decades and decades to take that baton to continue to advance these partnerships globally because we understand that we are, you know, we recognize our own inadequacies. There's a humility here and grace as it relates to the world we're living in and a need to understand, not just to be understood in relationships to these partnerships, in relationship to uh, our people to people engagement. And so I know you want to know what I bought. So you want to know that I got the George Clinton doll. 